When you're sharing a workspace with colleagues from different teams, it's important to make sure that everyone has the appropriate level of access to information. Let's say you have a page you only want shared with a single person or a single team space, or a page that only some people should be able to edit while others can only view it. Permissions make this possible and ensure team members have the right level of access to pages. This video will cover workspace roles, team space settings, and page access. There are a few possible roles one can hold in a Notion workspace. These roles control things like workspace settings and membership additions, but aren't directly linked to a person's ability to view or edit page content. Those are governed via team spaces and page level access, which we'll talk about later on. Workspace owners can alter the most decisive aspects of the workspace, such as the domain name, team space settings, workspace members, plans, security, or integrations as this Notion for Admins video explains at great length. Membership admins can add or remove members from the workspace, as well as manage groups. Note that this role is only available for enterprise plans. Members cannot change workspace settings or invite new members to the workspace, but can freely browse and join open team spaces. Finally, guests are external contributors who can only access individual pages that are shared with them. Click on the Guests tab to view all guests, as well as the pages they have access to. To manage access to your workspace, you'll need to click on Settings and Members from the sidebar. If you're a workspace owner or membership admin, you can add someone new to your workspace by clicking on Add Members, typing the new member's email, and clicking on the name or email that shows up. Pick your new member's role directly from this dropdown. Once that's done, click on Invite. To view all members of your workspace, Scroll down this list. This search bar allows you to find them by name or email. Also, you can share this link above to invite new people to your workspace directly. As an admin, you have the option to create different groups in your workspace. This allows you to apply the same sharing permissions to multiple people at once. This column indicates the team spaces each group can access. Click on the arrow to the left of a group to view its members. You can remove a member like so, and click here to add new members. Now, let's have a closer look at the Notion sidebar. Yours will probably look like something close to this and boast the following sections, team spaces, shared, and private. As a reminder, team spaces are a dedicated area for every team to store and organize information relevant to them. Every team space is assigned a menu of its own, which can be accessed by clicking on the three dot icon next to its name, then on team space settings. Anyone belonging to a team space is either a team space member or a team space owner. The latter has full access to team space pages, can add or remove members from the team space, and edit team space settings. Meanwhile, team space members can only access team space pages. Note that workspace roles exist independently from team space roles. In other words, one could be a workspace owner, as this tag indicates, and only have member rights for this particular team space. To see or adjust how pages within a team space are shared with its members, have a look at the Permissions section at the top of the Members tab. You'll find the following settings, which can only be altered by team space owners. A team space can either be default, open, closed, or private. These options affect a workspace member's ability to join and or see the team space. If you set a team space as default, it will automatically add everyone in the team space as a member. As this sentence briefly explains, anyone in the org can see and join an open team space. Anyone at the company can see a closed team space exists, but cannot join it unless they are invited by someone from the team space. The latter also goes for private team spaces, with the added restriction that those will not be visible to anyone but their members in the All Team Spaces menu. Now, this section lets the team space owner decide how pages within the team space are being shared. There are several sharing levels to a page. Give someone full access, and they will be allowed to edit and share the page with others. Can edit will let them edit the page, but not share it externally. Can comment means that one can view the page and leave comments on it, but not edit its content. Finally, can view simply allows someone to view the content of the page. Pages within a team space will be assigned sharing levels by default according to the permission you pick. For instance, Closed team spaces will automatically restrict page access to team space members and owners only. But you can always change these settings by clicking on the toggles and making a new selection like so. 
Note that the page sharing levels you establish here will impact all pages within the TeamSpace by default. To assign different page sharing levels to an individual page, you'll have to go to the page in question and click on its share menu at the top right. Changes you make here will apply to the pages you're on and any other subpages. Let us demonstrate using this general onboarding page as an example. By default, all members of the general team space, as well as everyone else in the workspace, have full access to this page. But say you work in the people team and you would like to rework some of the content of this doc. You'll probably want to keep the page secret to a selection of teammates until it is ready to be consulted by everyone. Now, there are two rules that are always true about how pages are shared in Notion. First, a page's sharing permissions is inherited from its parent page or team space defaults, but they can be granted and revoked from the page's share menu. Second, the higher level of access applied to a page wins. In other words, if a user has full access to a page via a group, but only can view access via team space sharing settings, they will be given full access to the page. To restrict access to this page, we'll need to start by giving everyone no access. Click on the toggles next to each faction and select no access, followed by restrict access. Now, the only person to have full access to this page is yourself. In this case, we are called Stephanie Lee. The next step will be to add the people you'd like to share this page with. Click on this gray rectangle, look up a teammate's name in the search bar and select them like so. You may also decide to add a pre-configured group. Again, type in their name here and select them when they show up. Finally, to add a person external to this workspace, simply type out their email and click on it like so. Pick an access level here. If you wish, you can write a personalized message attached to the page invite and hit invite. Every time you invite a guest to a page, this pop-up will give you the option of inviting them to your entire Notion workspace hence adding them as a full member. If all you want is to share this one page with your guest, simply select the other option and hit done. Scroll down your page's share menu and you'll see the groups, external guests, and people you just added show up at the bottom of the list alongside the access level you picked for them. Every time a page's access is restricted, you'll see this close eye icon appear at the top of the share menu, as well as the option to restore your permissions to how they were. This is something our people team might want to do once the general onboarding doc is final. In this case, they would simply need to click on Restore here and hit Restore Access. Now that we've covered page sharing settings at a team space and page level, let's talk about the sections in a Notion sidebar that are not team spaces, the shared and private sections we mentioned earlier. The shared section showcases pages that are shared with you or that you yourself have shared with individual people or groups. If you're not a member of the team space where a page is located, said page will show up in the shared section. Typically, pages in the shared section are shared within a small number of people. As an example, you could be sharing a page that is work in progress with only two or three close collaborators, like one-to-one -one notes shared with your manager. Lastly, the private section of the sidebar is for your own usage, like your personal to-do list or brainstorm page. It's where you can go to think, draft out your thoughts, or plan. Those pages can remain private forever, or you can decide to share them with specific individuals, team spaces, or everyone. Lastly, another way to share a Notion page with others is by publishing it to the web. As an example, a startup may want to publish this job board to quickly advertise open positions on social media. Publishing a page is as simple as clicking on the share menu, then toggling on the share to web option. Your page's web link will appear below. Click on Copy Web Link to copy the link to your clipboard. Publishing a Notion page to the web will also publish all pages within it. To access their content, viewers will only need to click on their name, just like in the Notion workspace. Note that if you do not find the option to share a page to the web, it may be because someone has disabled public page sharing, either at the team space level or at the workspace level. That's all for this video. As you can now appreciate, Sharing and permissions make it possible to fine-tune access to your content, no matter how specific your needs are. You should now grasp the different roles one can hold in a workspace and a team space, the possible access levels to a page, as well as the distinct sections the Notion sidebar carries. We hope this knowledge helps you run your Notion content smoothly, whether you're a team of 10 
or a thousand.